how you doing? My name is Ryan, and today I'm building and reviewing the LEGO Marvel sets released on April 1st. That would be the three new mech suits as well as the Endgame Battle Pack. And in the process, trying to figure out what's a good way and bad way to release exclusive minifigures. So to start, let's talk mech suits. Now, if you're a veteran to this channel, you know I have a pretty rocky relationship with the Marvel mechs. What, what if Iron Man had another mech suit? What if Justin what if ever had a mech suit? What if Justin ever had a mech suit? What if Justin ever had a mech suit? To be fair, the latest three have some pretty attractive qualities to them. Mostly the minifigures. A new gold Iron Man, a nice looking Black Panther figure with a T'Challa head included, as well as a Wolverine figure. We haven't had official LEGO X-Men figures since 2014, so that's pretty exciting. But at $10 per each set, does one new figure justify the creation and purchase of yet another Marvel mech suit? Well, only one way to find out, let's get building! So the three mech suits are built, and I will admit, they're not all that bad. At their base, they are pretty flimsy and identical to each other, making the builds pretty repetitive, but I was impressed by how each mech had non-aesthetic differences that actually matched the character. The Black Panther mech had thinner limbs and smaller feet to be more stealthy and limber. The Iron Man mech had pretty bulky shoulders and a new stud shooter in one hand, kind of like a repulsor hand and the Wolverine mech had flared shoulder pads to mimic his costume, not to mention large Wolverine claws on each hand. These small changes do make a real difference. It makes these mechs feel like individual action figures, as opposed to one action figure mold being painted three different ways. Granted, I still don't think these mech suits are great, but this is a step in the right direction. Now how about the figures? The Iron Man figure uses the new helmet mold to my dismay, considering the print is quite nice. It looks like the golden suit in Iron Man 3, and with the original helmet mold, it would have looked so much better. In fact, this figure is the perfect embodiment of why I don't like the new Iron Man helmet mold. Let me explain. The Tony Stark figure on the face print has two sides, one normal and one with the HUD view, the blue overlay over his face. With the older helmet, if you flipped up the face piece, you could see the HUD and it would look like you're seeing into the helmet, and Tony still has the helmet on, so it looks really, really good, almost like the movie. But with the new helmet, you have to take the entire piece off to see the HUD. So it almost makes no sense because by that point, he's not wearing the helmet. I don't know if it's a price thing or if it's a design thing or if it's just easier for LEGO to make more of these newer helmet molds, but conceptually, it just doesn't add up it makes very little sense. The Black Panther has a unique torso, but it still looks nearly identical to every other Black Panther minifigure we've had, especially since this one has no color accents. Also, no leg printing, so boo. The face and hair additions are very welcomed, and my primary mode for display here. 
The T'Challa head is different from the one featured in the Marvel CMF series, but not exclusive. It actually comes from the Queer Eye set and Karamo Brown. The Wolverine figure is great to see, but it feels like a pared down version of previous Wolverine figures. No leg printing and a more basic torso print. But what's weird is that we get a Wolverine head that has a side for the mask and a side for without the mask, but we don't get the hair piece. I don't even think it's listed as a part on Bricklinks. So you're kind of locked into having the mask on Wolverine, even though the head print kind of implies differently. So I'm kind of torn here because while the mechs were better than expected, the figures were kind of a letdown. At the end of the day, is a $10 mech suit the best way to release exclusive minifigures? I'm gonna say probably not, for this one reason. I can't think of a single show-stopping minifigure that's been exclusive to a $10 mech suit. Even the Miles Morales figure, probably the best mech suit figure we've ever gotten, was also included in the Daily Bugle set. I think my main problem with these mech suits from a figure collecting standpoint is that it always feels more like a hassle than a joy for these mechs. It's not like, wow, these are some great figures and a great set to go with it. It's always, ah, these are some pretty cool figures. Guess I have to buy the mech. Even if the mechs themselves are improving, the exclusive figures aren't worth the hassle, aren't worth feeding into LEGO's addiction to making more Marvel mech suits. But how about the second option for exclusive figures? So over the past couple of years, LEGO has shown a proclivity to releasing these accessory packs with themes like Star Wars, Harry Potter, City, and Marvel each getting a minifigure shaped clamshell like this. They retail for about $15 and include anywhere from 3 to 5 minifigures. Marvel has released a few of them and I enjoyed both of them, especially the Spider-Man one considering every figure was exclusive to that pack. So how does this 5 figure endgame pack stack up against the rest? The non-exclusive figures. First, we have everyone's favorite fodder figure, the Chitauri. Not much to say here as it's identical to the Chitauri figure we received in the Infinity Saga wave, and I kind of think LEGO needs a break from these Chitauri figures. You've had enough. You can stop now. Next is Valkyrie, which has the same print as the figure included in the Sicarian Iron Man set. Currently, this accessory pack is the cheapest way to get this iteration of Valkyrie, if not any iteration of Valkyrie, so if you want the character, here you go, 14 bucks. Next is Thor, and this is now the third set this exact figure has been in, and also the least expensive, so not much else to add. Now for the new figures. Up first is Korg, who dons his gladiator garb featured in Thor Ragnarok and then an Endgame. This is the outfit a lot of people wanted after LEGO released the Hawaiian shirt version of the figure, and yeah, this was worth the wait. The Korg figure has a brown shoulder pad and stud shooter staff to complete his ensemble, and I think it looks rather great. I do wonder though if Korg would have looked better with longer legs seen on Woody from Toy Story, or maybe even like a Hagrid style midfig. Midfigs? Is that what they're called? If not, maybe they should be. This is a great figure featured in a really inexpensive set, and hopefully the new Korg in Thor Love and Thunder is even better. And finally, Meek in his robot mech suit featured in Thor Ragnarok. While the print on the face is identical to the one featured in the Bro Thor Asgard set, it's nice to see LEGO finally deliver on the battle-ready Meek. The Meek body armor is rather flimsy and with little mobility, especially in the legs, but the look is about as good as we could expect with so few pieces. 
I think this battle pack is almost an apology to fans who wanted to see these characters in Thor Ragnarok sets, and really they do deliver. And even though only 2 out of 5 figures in this set are exclusive, consider that you're only paying around $8 per exclusive figure, and that's if you consider the other figures literally worthless. For my money's worth, I think these battle packs are an excellent way to release exclusive figures. Now, should all the figures in every battle pack be exclusive? No, that's not realistic. But as I said, even if only two of them are exclusive and you keep that $15 price tag, you're spending about $8 per exclusive figure. And they're also really good figures. But what do you guys think? Do you prefer the Marvel mech suits to get exclusive figures, or do you prefer these battle packs? Let me know in the comments below, and as always, if you like this video, be sure to subscribe to the channel, and thanks for watching.